I think that Obama's term is really George W. Bush's third term in office. I mean, he's been a disappointment for everybody. Hi, uh, Matt Welch for Reason TV here. We're at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas. And I'm with Jacob Horberger. Thank you for joining us. Founder of the Future of Freedom Foundation. That's a lot of alliteration. Uh, and a critic, I would uh, posit, of American uh, foreign policy, specifically interventionist foreign policy. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Looking at the current administration uh, and the present in particular, can you assess sort of what is the level of continuity with the two previous presidents in foreign policy? Are there gradations of differences when it comes to things like American military interventionism and foreign policy? I think that Obama's term is really George W. Bush's third term in office. I mean, he's been a disappointment for everybody. Uh, he is continuing the whole paradigm of interventionism, wars of aggression, occupations, torture, assassinations. I mean, nothing's really changed. Uh, so, uh, Hopefully something will change with the next administration. What, what happened to the anti-war left and the, uh, the pro-civil liberties, pro-closing down Guantanamo left? What's your kind of assessment of where that movement went to? Their man got into office, and they're like the conservatives uh, when George W. Bush got into office. When their man got into office, their lips were sealed, they became silent, they felt that it was a, an act of treason to go against their own party man. And so it's not doesn't apply to all liberals. I mean, some of them have been very, very stout in defending civil liberties through the Obama administration. But by and large, they've proven to be as much a disaster as when conservatives get their men in office. Is it inevitable? I mean, not to be a total pessimist or determinist on this stuff, but is it just inevitable that once you hold the reins of this particular power, you have no real incentive to dismantle it? I think amongst those people that look at statism as their model, as their hope, as their dream, that look at the political process in terms of if I can just get my people in public office, that's all that matters, yeah, it's hopeless. But I mean, that's where we libertarians come in. We, we provide the real hope because we're not talking about how to reform the statism. We're talking about how do we get a paradigm change where we, we get a free society instead of a reformed, warmed over status society. What do you see like on the kind of populist or political undercurrents, possibilities or agitation for a more libertarian or more or less interventionist foreign policy? Is that a more popular idea? Are there green shoots coming up in that particular market? Now, I have never been more excited about being in this movement than now. I mean, I've never seen so much excitement about libertarianism, especially among young people. And here you have two libertarians running for president, you know, Gary Johnson and Ron Paul. You've got Michelle Bachman talking about Ludwig von Mises and Hayek. I mean, this is incredible. And then you have all these young people that are excited about this philosophy. So for those of us that have been working in this vineyard for decades, these are exciting times. What do we have to uh, look, what's the next signpost? What's going to tell us that that movement is, is growing and maybe even has a, a snowball's chance in hell in Washington of actually changing policies or some of the ideas that we see in Capitol? That's a fascinating question. I think that's impossible to predict. Yeah. I think it's going to be the results of human action, not of human design, as Hayek pointed out, that we all keep working at what we're doing. And then somehow or another, these ideas percolate to the, to the surface and they manifest themselves in ways that none of us can predict. I think that's what's going to happen. Well, that's great. Thank you very much, Jacob Hornberger. For Recent TV, I'm Matt Welch.